Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. Uh, episode number 954, 954 for those keeping shorthand. And today I want to do a dating talk. So I've done for the last couple of weeks, I've been very adamant about resolutions and replacing them and everything else. I'll probably put the link at the back end of what you can find out more about that is. Um, but I thought I'd do one about dating because I, I posted a meme today, which I've had before, which was about the, um, the base of the picture. Let me start again. I posted a meme early today, which got a lot of response. And on it, there was, there were two people in the cartoon, and it was a cartoon, to be clear, where she is looking at him with a disdain on her face because he's got his face buried in his smartphone. And she said, and the line, the quote she says back to him is like, uh, would you mind if I get a, ro a rubber band or something like that and stick the smartphone to your forehead? So, excuse me, stick the, fo stick the smartphone to my forehead. So that way, at least it feels like you're looking at me. Whew, try to make that one clear. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and that's the thing is that smartphones have taken over our lives. I'm using one right now for my video. So it's clear that smartphones serve us in certain ways. And yes, I have a certain addiction to my Facebook lives. I do them every day. Discipline, rather put discipline than, than anything else. But what I'm speaking about here is for a lot of people is this context of smartphones invading everything in our lives too. Because because smartphones have been around for a long time. You know, I got my first iPhone in 2007 when they first came out. So I've been on the smartphone bandwagon for a long time. So I'm not going to disdain smartphones. However, there's some things they do to relationships that really mess things up. Dating and relationships. Smartphones have a lot of uses and a lot of prices. So I'm going to give you some of each to give you something to play with here and give you some understanding. First of all, um, having a smartphone isn't the end of the world. And then there are some people I know, yes, adults, humans, who walk around with flip phones, not smartphones, because they don't do those, which I'm not sure if it's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. It works for them. But when it comes to dating, and I'll give you a couple of things here. One is the distraction factor. And this is only part of it. There's more to it in this, by the way. But distraction factor is basically where people have this tendency, because I'm not going not gonna to label gender bias, because it happens to both. I'm just thinking that I've got no I've got no context to say if it's more men than women, more women than men, I don't know. So I'm just going to say both. They. <laughs> if you've got information research you can post in the comments, that's fine with me. I don't mind listening to that. But basically, there's no statistics I'm aware of that state that more men than women do this or more women than men do this. So both genders do this, which is they have the smartphones as a distraction wherever they are. I mean, just the fact now that you get massive tickets for driving while texting or driving while not hands-free is an indication of how prevalent smartphones have become in our lives. When you're on dates, it's really not romantic. And this is one of the things. There are some ex exceptions, I'll give you that in a moment. But the thing is that one of the problems we have with smartphones is the distraction factor. Because we are in a place where it's so easy to be pulled in by a ding or a ring or a buzz or something else from our phones when we're facing somebody across the table. I mean, it happens in meetings, it happens in social engagements, it certainly happens in dating, unfortunately. And I'm hoping this will stop if, I, if what I suggest it works. Because the reality is what distracts us takes precedence or is more important than what's in front of us. Now, in some cases, that's really clear and that's fine. But in other cases, it may be like a, a rude awakening to when you're looking across from your new date and she, sh he or she, whoever is across the table from you, looking at you with hope in their eyes with a sense of possibility feeling that might be important to you. And your phone rings and you're like, straight into the phone. And that's not very uh, complimentary. And to be honest, some people have very fragile egos and it destroys their egos. Now, not everybody is, but if you've got problems with that, I can help you with that separately, if your ego is challenged by this. But here's the thing. When you're on a date, ideally, you're enjoying that person's company enough that you don't need to worry about anything else. In fact, a really nice first date would be one we don't even remember the wait stuff or the crash that happened in the kitchen two seconds ago or anything else that's going on in the restaurant. But people fall into this trap of having to have everything at their fingertips because the problem with smartphones is they are connected to everything. So the, the benefit can also be the price. And especially when it comes to dates, it's time to leave the phone at home now. Again, it's, I'll give you a couple of exceptions. If you are on a, on a date and you have a babysitter at home with the kids, because you're out on your date because you're a single parent and you want to have someone take care of the kids and you can go out on a date, to tell your date, by the way, I have my phone out because my babysitter may need to contact me, that's fine. But you, first of all, you pre, pre um, you agree beforehand. So you pre something, you come out and make to me. 
so you do that first so that way you at least got a, a, a uh, um, an exception to the rule included so you both have an agreement on that but if you just leave your, if you leave your smartphone out that's not going to work because it's a temptation both for you and for your date there's a I remember there's a, um, a conversation piece a couple of years ago now talking about if you go to dinner with your friends and you sit around the table whoever picks up their phone first pays the whole bill so in social engagements smartphones have got a bad reputation now of course it's, uh, it's switched that now because everyone wants to take pictures of everything and pictures of the food and Instagram everything and it's like we've gone away from the social interaction skills by a long shot it's time to come back to them the second piece I want to talk about is communication by cell phone by smartphone this um, lowest common denominator communication method of using texting messaging typing to reach out to somebody whether it's romantic or friends whether it's Facebook Messenger texting WhatsApp Skype message, anything. The thing you need to know about texting is it's a minimalist communication skill. And I mean that literally because it's something like written communication by text is less than 7% of our communication. Meaning that 93% or more of our communication is not included in that text. And I've done a talk about this before, about how communication is important to have it by voice, at least if not face to face, because to increase the communication quality, not just the words, but it's the sound it makes, meaning that it's the sound of your voice. It's because there's tonality, has timber, has tempo, has emotion. So you know when they say a certain word, what it means, which you don't get in a text. Beyond that, in person is even more powerful because then you've got facial expression, you've got body language, you've got posture, you've got all these other things that let you know what the other, people, the other person's saying that isn't the words. So cell phones in communication have their limits. As I remember in, the, in somebody's comment on, I think somebody put, either commented on my post or it's talked about in other places, is that yes, cell phones are fine to use for navigation, to get you there and for appointments, for calendar events. But when you're out with somebody on a face-to-face -face communication, put the damn thing down. Better yet, put it away, turn it off, Mute it, put it in the car, put it in the pocket, put it somewhere else and don't bring it out during the date. Unless you want to break the date completely. Now, again, one more exception. <laughs> there may be something comes up in the conversation where you, where you are in fact with somebody you're on, and you've been on a few dates, maybe you are in romantic connection and you want to show them pictures of your dog or your cat or the kids. Then yes, having a phone to be able to show them, that's okay too. But again, you've, you've basically, in a way, requested suggested or asked for permission to do that and this is the thing about having a smartphone is it's not a permission granted experience when you're out with somebody on a romantic setting you're out with somebody on a social setting the question that may come up is how much are you invested in being with them versus how much are you invested in being on your phone because there are so many people and i know certain performers talk about this when they have rock concerts where the problems and, and this has come up many times I've seen on comedians talk about this how people are so busy using their phones to watch what's going on, on on the stage they're blocking their own views they can't see what's going on it's like you're going to see it on your phone later if you do that put it like you know next to you so you can watch what's going on and you can record it with the phone but here's the thing why not have the experience itself there are quite a few concerts I know that do now where they ban digital digital recorders from the event completely so you can only be there to experience it full on in the moment that's kind of special. <clears throat> Excuse me. So smartphones have their places and their places they should not be. So I'm just offering you a cautionary tale, some advice that when you're in the dating arena and you're in, or I should say when you're in the social engagement arena where you're meeting people in real life, the smartphone doesn't need to be in front of you. Unless, it's a, unless you're using it as a means of communication of, of information, communication of pictures, communication of something that you are bringing into conversation does not give you the excuse to go digging in conversation to find something you give you an excuse to get the phone out. Mm -mm, don't mean that. But you may have, it may come automatically or, or um, innocently enough, so to speak. So I think you get my point about this whole thing about cell phones and communication and cell phones and dating. What is your priority? What is your true intention? So when you understand that, it will shift your paradigm and it is okay to go an hour, two or three hours without your phone in front of you, in case you've been wondering. You can survive that. And if it's a good date, it'll be worth every moment.
So I invited you to take this into hand when you do go on your dates or social engagements or out with friends or out with your partner to actually put the phone aside and spend time face to face. Maybe it's time you get to know the person in front of you rather than through the screen. It's a food for thought. I thought we'd give you that for a Saturday before we go on the dating. If you go on a dating tonight, it's a Saturday night after all. I'll give you something to think about. So I hope this has been of help to you. Um, this is probably one of the first, <clears throat> first or second talk I've done in maybe two, two or three weeks about relationship-centric stuff because I've been moving my work into another arena. But if you want some help in this area, I still do work in this area. <laughs> so send me a message over social media if you want some help, clarity, understanding about relationships and dating. I still do have a few coaching clients that I do work with on that. So if that's something you want to work with, great. Um, in addition, the big focus I've been talking about, which I've been talking about now for the last three weeks, is the launch of my new BFF Masterclass. If you're using a phone because you've got so much distraction out there and you want to fall back to yourself, my invitation to the BFF Masterclass will land for you because it is a powerful three-month journey, a master, master mastermind group journey, course, exploration, experience, masterclass, mastermind, all sorts of things. There's so many different names for it. That basically is a three month journey together that I facilitate with a lot of people together in the group that is gonna be supportive, collaborative, honoring, safe, and sacred. And together we're gonna to discover the three elements I talk about a lot now, which is balance, freedom, and flow, BFF. So you go to my website, which is barrysilver.com forward slash BFF and read about it. I'll put the link in the comments and check it out. Um, again, if you wanna help me about relationship questions, dating questions, stuff like that, message me on social media too, or put a comment below and I'll reach out to you. So about that okay yes just just rewinding what i need to make sure i cover so if you haven't seen my broadcast before this is my daily facebook live i do every day at 5 p.m civic time right here on my personal page on facebook which is barry selby join me any day of the week i'm here every day seven days a week the replays go to my business page on facebook which is barry selby author um they are all there but facebook doesn't show them all so you can go watch the last maybe two or three hundred of there. the rest of them are hidden for whatever reason facebook does that but you can find them on my business my uh, youtube channel so first of all barry selby author is my business page please like my page there. Also, you can go to my YouTube channel where every single one of them is saved. Every one of them aren't saved. Every one of them is. <laughs> They're all there, put it that way. <laughs> um, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on the playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, all of my talks are there. Again, the last couple of weeks have been primarily focused on my new direction, which is more spiritual, self-support, self-love, self-centered, support, training, coaching, etc. Um, but the rest of them are all about love and relationships, so you can find some good stuff out there. So with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. Welcome to my Saturday broadcast. I'm back in tomorrow for another talk about something relevant to life, relationship, love, spirituality. We'll see. Tomorrow's Sunday. It might be a spiritual talk. We'll see. Um, and as always, please, as a reminder, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.